morning, everybody. Today is the start. Is the beginning of the second year of the video conference lecture series for secondary school English teachers, uh, cooperated by the University of Oregon, the King's Foundation of Distance Learning, uh, the American Embassy, Thai Tiso, Chulalongkorn University Language Institute, and TOT. May I now, and the Ministry of Education, of course, which provides us with all the teachers of English to be participants here. Um, may I now call upon the Chairman, Kun Kwan Gao Wachero Thai, to give an opening speech of the second year video conference lecture series, please. Mr. George Wilcox, Regional English Language Officer the Embassy of the United States of America in Bangkok, Mrs. Leslie Op Beckman, Senior Instructor and Technology Coordinator, the American English Institute, the University of Oregon. Distinguished participants, I am delighted to be among this gathering and sitting in a place where we can call a global classroom. Beside me and on the screen are our partners of efficient teamwork, Mr. George Wilcox, Mrs. Leslie Op Beckman, Associate Professor Narapon Chan Ocha, Associate Professor Suchada Nimanit, all of whom are representative from the prestige organizations both in Thailand and in America. More importantly, they have joined forces in contributing on improving English teaching skill for Thai teachers. Of course, we will never forget Mr. Ch Richard Boyum, the former regional English language officer of the U.S. Embassy, who combined efforts of different people to a project set up and left this legacy for us. In 2002, His Majesty King Pumipol voiced his concern over improving English teaching for teachers at the Eastern Learning Foundation at Wang Krakenwon Palace in Hua Hin. One year later, in 2003, text of the project for English teacher training via video conferencing. Distant Learning Foundation, in cooperation with the Embassy of the United States of America, the University of Oregon, Thai Chesol, Language Institute, Chulalongkorn University, with the part from TOT Public Company, presented three lectures about an overview of English teaching by Mrs. Leslie of Beckman from the University of Oregon to bring the training program from University of Oregon to Thailand. Distant Learning Foundation managed to have it transmitted by using ISDN and IP video conferencing connectivity and broadcast live via satellite to the remote schools and the Eric Center throughout Thailand. Thanks to TOT Public Company Limited, Thailand's leading telecommunication company, for their support on the project TOT is one of the main sponsors who provide the etching technology of ISDN and IP networking, the well-equipped meeting room, the technician teams, and so on. Today presents the third program for which we operate the three sites physically separated, digi digitally connected Oregon, Bangkok, and Hua Hin. The results of the past 10 lecture series, which ended in September, comes out constructively. The participants are satisfied with the course overall. Among the 10 topics, critical thinking ranks first for the topic which the teacher think it is most useful to their work. No doubt that the topic which we'll be presenting from now on is and according with the main interest. I would like to welcome all the teachers sitting in this room or watching the television at school. 
most of them are new and some teachers were here in the last training. I wish you all a success. Thank you. Next, I would like to call upon Mr. Josh Wilcox, the regional English language officer from the American Embassy in Bangkok, to give a welcoming speech, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the U.S. Embassy and the regional English language officer, I welcome you all here in Bangkok, in uh, Hue Hin, and at the Eric centers throughout Thailand, and perhaps in other countries in the area. Um, I'm really happy to be here, as I said, and I've really been looking forward to this video series, especially this uh, conference today on project-based learning. Before I tell you about an experience that I had on project-based learning, I want to thank the Ministry of Education for making it possible for all of you to come here today in Bangkok, in Hue Hin, and at the Eric Centers throughout the country. We really appreciate that. Uh, now to tell you about my experience with project-based learning. I used to work in Boulder, Colorado. There was a primary school that had a bilingual program teaching English to Spanish speakers. And uh, the primary school was located on a very busy street. And the teachers and the parents were worried that maybe their children would get hurt in a traffic accident. So they had a project with the students to find out a solution to this problem. And they ended up in this six-month project putting up a traffic light. Uh, what is it? Phi Beng? I'm learning a bit of Thai here. The Phi Beng Liu Sai. This is what I have to say to the taxi driver here. Um, they, during six months, they had a series of letters that they needed to write to the city council to convince the city council to um, install this traffic light at the busy corner. And uh, so the students needed to learn to write letters in English. These students, these pupils were about 11, 12 years old. They made presentations in English to the city council. They did a study of the traffic. They would go out at different times of the day and count the number of cars. So all this was practice in English, but actually doing something to solve the problem. So as I said, uh, Kun Leslie, I'm really looking forward to uh, today's video conference. Thank you. And uh, I hope I got this right. I had uh, about seven weeks of Thai, and I asked my assistant, Konina, yesterday, I remember a phrase, Pop Kon Maina Krap. And I think maybe here I should say, I hope to Pop Kon Maina Krap the next time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilcox. Um, the second series uh, of video conference lectures, we'll, we will have 10 uh, lecture series as well. And the first lectures will be a follow-along series on using project-based learning in a secondary level EFL classroom. Today's session is an introduction to the series. And the speaker who needs no introduction, Professor <laughs> Leslie Opbeckman, <laughs> whom we are very familiar with, and she's our um, popular uh, teacher. <laughs> and of course, she's one of the key persons who initiated this project. Leslie Opbeckman is now a senior instructor in the MA language teaching specialization program 
at the University of Oregon. And today, Leslie is coming to introduce you the overview of the project-based learning. Leslie Obbegman, please. All right. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, I, too, would like to thank everyone for their support. Um, I'm really honored to be with you, again, virtually here for a second series. Thank you to the Royal Thai Distance Learning Foundation, to the Ministry of Education, to TOT, to the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok, to all my colleagues, uh, my dear colleagues at Chulalongkorn University who have stood by me through this project and others as well. And to all of you teachers who are here with us tonight, um, can I see the Bangkok people? Will you give me a hello? Hello, Bangkok. All right. Nice to meet you. All right. How about Hua Hin? Hello, Hua Hin. Hua Hin teachers. Hello. Oh, you all? Hello. Yes. It's so nice to have you back. And we have our facilitators again. Well, as um, both the chairman and uh, Mr. Wilcox pointed out, we are starting a second series this year with 10 sessions. And the topics for both sessions are based on a sort of voting system or an interest system on the part of the teachers from last year. So a big thank you to last year's teachers who helped us decide that for the first five sessions, we're going to do a follow-along program on project-based learning. The second set of sessions will be on creating a content uh, materials for EFL classrooms, but we'll wait and hold off on that until spring. What I'm really interested in doing tonight is, uh, for those of you who were with us last time we talked about project-based learning, we're going to revisit some of those core principles tonight, but we're also going to introduce a way that you can begin to use project-based learning over the next few months in your classroom. So we'll be looking, making some choices. We'll be working in groups. Those of you who were with us before, I'm hoping you'll help bring the new people along and serve as group leaders and um, help us get as far as we can tonight with tonight's presentation. Are we ready to begin? Yes? Yes. You have, to, you have to help me out because you have to, when I ask a question, you have to shake your head like this. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. You have to give me a little feedback, just like you would in a real classroom. Okay, so the first thing you need to know on my first slide on my screen is that we do have a supporting website that goes with all of our sessions. For project-based learning, we're using the same site that we used last year, but we're putting, of course, the new materials up. So the PowerPoint slides from tonight, the handouts from the class, the materials, um, everything is pretty much all there. One thing that's new this year is that um, we are going to ask you, if possible, if any of you have cameras, if any of you have digital cameras that you can use in your schools or you have someone who can come visit with a digital camera, I would like to invite you to come to the website and send some pictures of you and your students as you're working on your projects. And we have a new photo album on the website. We'd like very much to be able to showcase some Thai teachers and the work that you're doing. So I'll be talking with the Royal Thai Distance Learning Foundation and with uh, Kun. Kun Wilcox, Kun George, to see if they can maybe help with this a little bit as well. Okay. So what we're going to work on tonight. Um, we had some opening remarks. I think we'll have some remarks from um, uh, Vice Provost Russ Tomlin a little bit later on. We're going to do an overview of a kind of definition of what project-based learning can be. And it can be many things. We'll be asking you to make some choices and take some leadership on this as well. We'll have a couple of activities tonight. I'll be asking you to work in groups. And I'll be asking you to pick out a type of class project that you would like to work on. You'll have a little bit of homework. When you come back to the next two sessions in December, you'll be further developing the ideas that you start tonight. OK. How many people think you can do that? Raise your hand if you think you're ready to start a project tonight. Are you ready to start a project? Yeah. All right. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. 
All right, so let's see if we can come up with a, a definition, first of all, of what project-based learning is. Um, this is not a test, this is not an examination, and we'll be coming back to these core principles throughout the next five sessions. Some of the key characteristics of the pedagogy, or the main principles of project-based learning, is that it's based on a theoretical framework called constructivism. And what constructivism means, it means that the learner constructs or builds his or her own learning experience. So as part of a project, um, as the very nice example that George Wilcox pointed out to us, is that the learning happens as part of a process. Um, it results in a kind of a product, but it's very much up to the learners um, to determine how they build that learning experience. So the teachers, we act as kind of guides. We know essentially where our students are going and we have goals and we have means for assessing the milestones along the way. But the, the main object of a project is that the students construct or they build this experience for themselves. A large part of project-based learning is that students often pose questions. It may be questions that we as the teacher suggest. It may be questions that they come up with on their own. In fact, we hope that they come up with many of those questions on their own. And this kind of question asking is called inquiry, inquiry-based learning. So again, we have this general idea of where our students are going. Um, we're guiding them along the way, but we give them the freedom and we encourage them to ask questions and have a role in determining their paths as part of this learning process. The other, one other characteristic of project-based learning it is that it's frequently based on a theme or a content area. And these content areas can be factual, um, they can be a problem. So George Wilcox um, very nicely pointed out a problem that exists in the community. Um, it was a problem for the school. So the students and the teacher together took on the task of trying to solve this problem. They had to gather information. They had to gather data. They had to synthesize it. They had to think about it. And they had to try to solve the problem together cooperatively. So it's constructive, it's inquiry-based, it's content-based, and as you might have guessed, it also involves integrated language skills. Um, George very nicely described for us a number of skills that came into play in the problem-solving experience. Students were speaking, they were listening, they were learning new vocabulary, they were using new grammatical constructs, they were writing letters, they were reading, they were presumably editing and proofreading. Um, they were using their critical thinking skills. All of those things are integrated and part, typically, of a project-based learning experience in a language classroom. The last thing that we're going to want to think about, and we're not going to wait till the end, in fact, we're going to talk about this next time, is how we assess a project. And how we assess a project is very much tied to the goals that we set or that we set together with our students. When we talk about what happens in project-based learning, we're often looking at some kind of performance. And I use performance there very loosely. Performance can be a writing performance, it can be a speaking performance, it can be a, an enactment, a, a role play, it can be what you, simply what you observe on a day-to-day -day level with your students in the classroom. So we're going to look at assessment and evaluation other than a paper and pencil, multiple choice kind of test. So we're looking at formative evaluation, we're looking at helping our students and watching their performance throughout the project. A project can last for as short or as long as you would like it to be. So we're going to give you as the teachers, as the guides, a lot of choices about how you structure these projects in your classrooms as well. One of the things I'm going to ask you to think about tonight is how much time you can realistically set aside during your class or outside of class as part of your structure for your project. Let me pause for a moment here and check in with 
Ajar Narapurn and ask, um, Narapurn, are you translating tonight? Is this a good time to pause or shall I move forward? Yeah, I think I do a brief summary here, if you don't mind. Okay, good. Okay. Not at all. Standing by. Thank you. Okay. Today, Mr. Leslie has started to talk about the project based learning. หลักการก็คืออย่างแรกก็คือว่า project based learning เนี่ยขึ้นเป็น based on approach หนึ่งในการสอนนะคะที่เรียกว่า constructivism ซึ่งก็หมายถึงว่าอาศัยการเรียนรู้ประสบการณ์ในการเรียนรู้ของผู้เรียนเองนะคะคือผู้เรียนเนี่ยจะเป็นหลักในการเรียนรู้นะคะใช้ประสบการณ์ตัวเองโดยที่ครูเนี่ยเซตโกลให้นะคะมีให้วิธีนะคะว่ามีวิธีที่จะทำที่จะเรียนรู้อย่างไรได้บ้างแล้วนักเรียนก็จะต้องใช้ประสบการณ์ตัวเองในการเรียนรู้สแสวงหาความรู้นั้นนะคะหลักการที่สองคืออาจารย์เลสลี่ใช้คำว่า inquiry based learning นะคะคือเราส่งเสริมให้นักเรียนเนี่ยถามคำถามนะคะมากๆเลยนะคะแล้วก็นักเรียนมีบทบาทที่จะตัดสินใจที่จะเลือกทางเดินของตัวเองในการที่จะเรียนรู้ในสิ่งนั้นๆน,น,นะคะเรียนเรียนรู้ภาษานะคะโดยเลือกโปรเจกต์เองอะไรอย่างนั้นนะคะว่าสนใจด้านไหนหลักการที่สามก็คือเป็นลักษณะการเรียนแบบคอนเทนต์เบสนะคะคือมีคอนเทนต์เป็นเป็นเป็นตัวหลักนะคะไม่ใช่หมายความว่าไม่ใช่คือเอาภาษามาเป็นกลวิธีนะคะแต่ว่าตัวคอนเทนต์ที่เรว่าหมายถึงว่ามีตัวปัญหานะคะหรือว่ามีสถานการณ์อะไรซึ่งจะต้องให้นักเรียนเนี่ยเข้าไปแก้ปัญหานั้นนะคะคือเราไม่ได้เดินผ่าน language exercise เหมือนที่เราเราเราเราสอนเด็กเหมือนเมื่อก่อนนะคะ language นั้นเป็นตัวที่จะเสริมให้เด็กเนี่ยสามารถที่จะมาแก้ปัญหาที่นักเรียนตั้งขึ้นมาหรือครูช่วยตั้งขึ้นมาในโปรเจกต์ต่างๆนะะแล้วก็ประการที่4ก็คือว่าโปรเจกต์เบสเซอร์นิ่งเนี่ยเป็นการให้นักเรียนเนี่ยได้เรียนทุกทักษะเลยค่ะนะคะทั้งทักษะการอ่านการเขียนการฟังการพูดนะคะได้เพิ่มพูนคำศัพท์ได้เพิ่มพูนทั้ง critical thinking skill ซึ่งเราได้รับเรตติ้งว่าว่าว่าท่านอาจารย์ที่เข้าร่วมโครงการเนี่ยให้ความสนใจมากที่สุดด้วยนะคะแล้วก็หลักการที่5คือว่าการประเมินผลไม่ใช่อาจารย์เลสซี่บอกไม่ใช่ paper pencil เหมือนเมื่อก่อนไม่ใช่ paper choice วงๆนะคะแต่เป็น performance assessment คือเราต้องประเมินพฤติกรรมของนักเรียนเนี่ยตลอดระยะเวลานะคะแล้วก็เป็นการประเมินอาจจะโดยดูจาก writing performance คือการเขียนงานเขียนของเด็กที่เขาส่งหรือว่าดูจากเห็นสว่าเราให้เข้ามานำเสนองานหรือว่าทำกิจกรรมกลุ่มได้พูดคุยนะคะทำโรเพลย์ทำอะไรนะคะในนักศึกษาเป็นโปรเจกต์นั้นโดยการคืนแต่ว่าเน้นว่านักเรียนนี้ต้องทำงานร่วมมือกันทำงานนะคะแล้วก็อันนั้นก็จะเป็นห้าหลักแล้วก็หลักการนะคะเกี่ยวกับโปรเจกต์เบสเลอร์นิ่งแล้วก็มีอันหนึ่งที่อาจารย์ทิ้งท้ายก็คือว่าเวลาอาจารย์ก็ถามว่าพวกเราเนี่ยนะคะอาจารย์ทั้งหลายเนี่ยมีเวลาที่จะแบ่งคือคงต้องแบ่งเวลาให้นักเรียนตรงนี้อาจจะไม่ใช่เฉพาะในห้องเรียนนะคะนอกห้องก็อาจจะต้องเสริมเพื่อที่ให้นักเรียนมาปรึกษานะคะหรือเขาจัดเวลาแม้แต่ว่าให้นักเรียนเข้าหาเวลาไปพบกันเองปรึกษากันเองในกลุ่มเพื่อที่ทํางานนั้นนะคะค่ะตอนนี้คงขอเท่านี้ก่อนนะคะ uh, over to you Leslie All right, very nice. Thank you very much, Ajar Narapurn. All right, so we talked a little bit about some of the pedagogical foundations, some of the core principles of project-based learning. Let's look a little bit at some of the practices. So what does it look like in the classroom? Typically, project-based learning is very learner-centered. That was sort of in, that was very much implied by some of the pedagogies that we just talked about. So again, the learner makes choices, is given choices about um, topics or direction, lines of inquiry, things that they produce. Um, very much learner-centered. Project-based learning is also both both process 
and product oriented. So I mentioned a little bit that we're going to be looking at some alternative forms of assessment, looking at people's performance. We're looking at their process as they go along. We're also looking at the end product. The end product may be writing. It may be an oral performance. It may be a dramatization. It may be a photo essay. It may be something that the students build with their hands. It, it can be many different kinds of products. It may be multiple products. Um, over time, once you're more comfortable with project-based learning, you may even encourage different groups or different students in the class to have different products at the same time. So we can look at a variety of products as well. One of the goals of project-based learning is to motivate students. So in this affective domain, we want to build their confidence. We want to engage their interests. If they're engaged, if they're motivated, if they're feeling confident and successful, they will spend more time on task. More time on task means better learning outcomes. If they're having fun with English, they're enjoying it, they're deeply engaged, they're going to have a more positive experience and be more likely to go on and learn more English and feel confident when they use it. Project-based learning is not competitive. The students are not engaged in contests against each other. Uh, we are not looking to assign some people high grades and some people low grades. We would like all learners to feel successful. To the degree that it works within your classroom framework, students can work cooperatively with others. So the, the goal is an emphasis on cooperative learning um, over competitive learning. Okay. Some other characteristics of project-based learning are that it can be flexible in scope. You can choose the duration of time that you would like the project to last. Perhaps it will only last a few days in class. Perhaps it will last longer. In some cases, projects last as long as an entire term or perhaps even an entire academic year. One of the positive benefits of project-based learning is that it is appropriate for all ages. Although many of you are working primarily with secondary level audiences, we recognize that you frequently wear multiple hats. You may find yourself working with primary level students, either inside your school or in another institution, or perhaps even very young learners or older learners. In all cases, this is both a pedagogical framework and a set of practices that you can apply now in your teaching and in the future with other ages as well. This is also an opportunity for you to decide whether your classroom setting works best with students when they're working individually or in pairs or in groups. And you'll be able to make that choice and set those constructs for your classroom. Again, we'll be looking at a variety of in products. I'm really excited here tonight. With my last trip in Thailand, I had the honor of visiting a number of schools in the Bangkok area and up in the north. And I have some photos of some very real projects from high schools like yours that I can show you tonight as examples um, from Thailand for Thailand. And again, I'm hoping to get more of those examples tonight as well and over the course of this, this um, series. Ajar Nadaporn, would you like to do another summing up at this point? Yes, thank you, Leslie. Ajar yeah, Leslie got a put in a lesson at the car con con class teach I project based learning. Naka got to like a hungry and none class and got a pen. But I like to learn the center. Naka got young tea, a pool can you a pool and pen soon clang. Naka then on poor pool and ne, the tongue rain do pipe a sub canton egg, the canton project. Laka pen. Process และ product oriented คือว่าเน้นทั้งกระบวนการนะคะเราจะดูนักเรียนไปตามขั้นตอนกระบวนการที่เขาเรียนรู้แล้วก็ในขณะเดียวกันเราก็ต้องดูที่ end product ด้วยที่ที่ผลของโปรเจกต์ที่นักเรียนทำนะคะซึ่งก็อย่างที่จันได้อธิบายแล้วก็อาจจะเป็นทางด้าน reading เอ่อทางด้าน writing หรือว่าการพูดการทำ role play อะไรพวกนั้นนะคะประการที่3ก็คือ class แบบนี้เนี่ยนะคะจะช่วยกระตุ้นให้แรงจูงใจกับนักเรียนนะคะแล้วก็สร้างความเชื่อมั่นให้นักเรียนมากยิ่งขึ้นนะคะโดยที่นักเรียนเนี่ยพอมีความเชื่อมั่นมากขึ้นแล้วเนี่ยนักเรียนก็จะให้ทุ่มเทนะคะแล้วก็ใช้เวลามากขึ้นในการเรียนรู้และเมื่อใช้เวลามากขึ้นในการเรียนภาษาอังกฤษนะคะเป็นต้นก็จะได้เรียนรู้มากขึ้น
ลักษณะประการที่4ของของคลาสที่ใช้ PBL นี่ก็คือว่าเป็นลักษณะ cooperative นะคะคือนักเรียนต้องช่วยเหลือซึ่งกันและกันทำงานร่วมกันนะคะเป็นกลุ่มเป็นคู่เป็นอะไรก็แล้วแต่ไม่ใช่ไม่เน้นการแข่งขันนะคะไม่มีการแข่งขันว่ากลุ่มไหนดีกว่ากลุ่มไหนนะคะทุกคนเนี่ยควรจะต้องมีความรู้สึกนักเรียนไม่ว่าจะเก่งอ่อนในห้องเราเนี่ยซึ่งมี mixed ability เนี่ยความสามารถคลากันเนี่ยจะต้องมีความรู้สึกว่าทุกคนเนี่ยประสบความสําเร็จนะคะเมื่อทำโปรเจกต์เสร็จแล้วเนี่ยไม่ทางใดก็ทางหนึ่งนะคะอีกประการนึงคือว่าลักษณะคลาสแบบนี้เนี่ยจะยืดหยุ่นได้นะคะทั้งในด้านระยะเวลาการที่เรามอบหมายให้นักเรียนทำโปรเจกต์นะคะตัวโปรเจกต์อาจจะเ,เป็นโปรเจกต์ใหญ่นะคะใช้เวลาทั้งเทอมหรือว่าโปรเจกต์นั้นใช้เวลาแค่เป็นอาทิตย์ก็ได้นะคะอันนี้ก็แล้วแต่ความเหมาะสมแล้วก็ลักษณะการเรียนแบบนี้เนี่ยอาจารย์เลสซี่บอกว่าเหมาะสมกับนักเรียนทุกวัยนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นตั้งตั้งการระดับประถมขึ้นมานะคะก็ใช้ได้ทั้งนั้นเลยอีกประการนึงคือว่าครูมีกิจกรรมหลากหลายเพราะฉะนั้นนักเรียนก็จะทํางานทั้งอาศาอาจจะเดี่ยวบ้างนะคะเป็นคู่บ้างเป็นกลุ่มบ้างอันนี้ก็แล้วแต่บทบาทขั้นตอนในแต่ละในแต่ละขั้นตอนของโปรเจกต์แล้วก็ครูก็อาจจะแนะนําด้วยนะคะให้เหมาะสมแล้วก็ end product ที่ได้จากโปรเจกต์พวกนี้เนี่ยจะหลากหลายมากนะคะอย่างที่อาจารย์เลสลี่บอกเป็นได้ถูกรูปแบบเลยนะคะทั้งอาจจะเป็นโฟโต้เอเซที่อาจารย์เคยยกตัวอย่างให้ดูเป็นโรเพลย์เป็นดราม่าเป็นออโรเพรสเซนเทชันเป็นงานเขียนเขียนในสังต่างเขียนเรื่องสั้นเขียนเ,เล่าประสบการณ์เล่าที่ไปท่องเที่ยวมาหรืออะไรทำโบรชัวร์ทำอะไรนะคะค่ะอันนั้นก็เป็นลักษณะโดยรวมของ Project Based Learning Class uh, Over to you Leslie Thank you Okay, thank you very much, Ajar n a r a p u r n um, We're just about to head into our first activity. Um, I'm very pleased to say that um, Professor Tomlin is here. He's he's early, in fact. Um, Uh, due to my misunderstanding with the time, um, I asked him to be here about 15 minutes from now, and so he's just right on time. In fact, a little bit early. I think what we'll do is uh, begin our first activity, and I'll move the microphones and such over to him, and we'll ask him to give his remarks um, once you, you're sort of in your groups and start working, and when we come back together. For your first activity, what I'm going to ask you to do tonight is get into groups for the first time. And I would like you to help all of us identify the class. Who is your target population that you will use with your project-based learning project over the next five sessions? Some things that you might want to write down on a piece of paper and talk about with your other group members are the number of students in your class and their ages. What is their language level? What are their interests? If you're not 100% sure what all of their interests are, how might you go about finding out that information? How many hours of week, per, how many hours of class per week do you have? What are some of the central themes in your books and in your curriculum? Because one of the things that I think you're going to want to do is identify a project that's based on a problem that needs to be solved, something that's happening in your community, or a topic that's very interesting in your curriculum or in your textbooks. Let's put this slide down just for a moment. I'm going to ask for um, a show of hands. Bangkok, are you ready to do activity number one? If you are, would you please raise your hand? Bangkok, are you ready? Okay. All right. How about Hua Hin? Are you ready to do the activity? You feeling comfortable with it? How about questions? Questions from our facilitators or from the teachers? I think it's clear. k u n s o r a d a It's clear, Ajahn n a r a p u r n Am I comfortable with it? Yes, yes. Leslie, they just raised their hands. Can you see it? I saw uh, them raise again. their hands. I did. Show Leslie your hands, please. <laughs> yeah, they're all confident. <laughs> okay, good. Um, to my um, esteemed facilitators, Kun Sorada and Ajahn n a r a p u r n and Ajahn Suchada, could you please help get them into the groups? This will be their first time working in the groups tonight. And I understand we have some experienced teachers, a few teachers from the previous session. Could you kind of sprinkle them around the room? 
and ask them to help uh, lead up the groups for tonight. We'll ask different people to take turns leading over the course of the next few sessions. But um, if we could get people into groups and started writing, and I'll put this slide back up on the screen. Okay. Let's see you moving into groups. กิจกรรมแรกนะคะอาจารย์อาจารย์เลสลี่ให้อ,อาจารย์คิดว่าคลาสที่อาจารย์จะนำ PBL ไปใช้เนี่ยจะเป็นคลาสอะไรของอาจารย์นะคะโดยที่ให้ให้ระบุว่านักเรียนเนี่ยจำนวนนักเรียนที่อาจารย์มีเอาของจริงเลยนะคะอาจารย์นะคะแล้วก็อายุของนักเรียนแล้วก็ระดับความสามารถทางภาษาของนักเรียนเนี่ยอาจารย์ว่าเป็นระดับประมาณไหนนะคะแล้วความสนใจของนักเรียนอาจารย์ทราบไหมอาจารย์อาจารย์สอนมาเทิมแล้วอาจารย์คงพอทราบนะคะค่ะแล้วก็จํานวนชั่วโมงที่อาจารย์จะให้ได้นะกับนักเรียนหรือว่าจะที่อาจารย์จะขอให้นักเรียนมาทํางานเพิ่มเติมได้นะคะต่ออาทิตย์ค่ะนะคะที่จะทําโปรเจกต์แล้วก็ประการสุดท้ายคือว่าทีมส์นะคะค่ะหัวข้ออะไรที่อาจารย์คิดว่าจะนํามาให้นักเรียนใช้ในโปรเจกต์ได้ซึ่งอาจจะเกี่ยวกับคอมมิชชั่นท้องถิ่นของเราอาจจะเกี่ยวกับหลักสูตรนะคะค่ะหรือว่าเกี่ยวกับบทเรียนอื่นๆวิชาอื่นของนักเรียนที่ว่านักเรียนจะสนใจนะคะลองลิสต์มาสักสองสาหัวข้อสองสามทีมนะคะค่ะสักสามนาทีได้ไหมคะอาจารย์ Okay, how about if we start coming back together as a whole group? I'm sure that you still have a lot more to discuss. We'll be continuing this discussion. In fact, I'll be asking you to carry it on uh, before we meet again outside of the video conference as well. Thank you. We will do a bit of debriefing um, based on what you've been discussing. Before we do that, I'd like to introduce um, Professor Russ Tomlin. Um, from the linguistics department and vice provost for academic affairs um, at the University of Oregon and a very strong supporter of, of this project and of our relationship with Thailand. Um, he has some opening remarks he'd like to share with us at this time. Uh, thank you, Leslie. Uh, it's always a little strange for me to talk across such long distances and I continue to be amazed by the creativity of the faculty uh, and the staff of the Distance Learning Foundation and of the University of Oregon who make this video conference series possible. I would like to welcome you on behalf of our colleagues here, including the president of the University of Oregon, Dave Fronmeyer, to this new video conference series. As I think most of you know already, this series is jointly produced by the Royal Thai Distance Learning Foundation, the DLF as we affectionately call it, and the University of Oregon. Uh, there are many people, of course, to thank, uh, and I would begin by thanking Tan Quanco, who I believe is there, though I can't see him, uh, for his continued leadership and inspiration to all of us for the development of opportunities for educators in Thailand and educators in the U.S to work together to help improve educational offerings for Thai students everywhere. Uh, I'm getting feedback in my ear. I'd also like to express our thanks to uh, the faculty involved, to uh, Professor uh, Leslie Ott Beckman from the University of Oregon, but also Ajarn Naraporn, Ajarn Suchata, and other colleagues at the DLF in Hua Hin and with the DLF in Bangkok for all of the work they've done. We had just recently a visit to the University of Oregon and to our cities of Eugene and Springfield from representatives from the DLF, Kun Manisa, Kun uh, along also with the Chargé d'Affaires from the U.S. Uh, the, from the Thai Embassy in the U.S. in Washington, D.C., Tan Chirachai, uh, who participated in a dedication of a gift of books to our sister cities, Eugene and Springfield, and to the University of Oregon in honor of His Majesty the King's 60th year 
of 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 his reign and service to the people of Thailand. All of these efforts that we have been involved in together have been devoted to education. And I would finish by saying our devotion to education reflected in teachers, reflected in the faculty involved in this video conference series, and invested and represented by the leadership of Tan Quan Co are all aimed at something fundamentally important, something that has been recognized as important, whether it's in Thailand or in the US or in many other parts of the world. And that's the fundamental importance of strong basic education for all of our children. And the opportunity for those children to imagine dreams that are worth dreaming and to have the possibility of those dreams coming true for themselves and for their families and for our nations as we strive in the 21st century to create something better and something wonderful, something that lives up to the ideals of what it means to be a human being in a complex world. So on behalf of everyone at the University of Oregon, we look forward to future work with the DLF in other areas, in mathematics, sciences in particular, and look forward to the chance to greet all of you as we have chances to visit Thailand and as hopefully in the future some of you would have the chance to visit the U.S. So on behalf of all of us here, welcome to the video conference and thank you for your patience having this strange person from outside of your video conference series take a few minutes to welcome you to the University of Oregon so many thousands of miles away but so close. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Russ. It's nice to have those remarks, and we appreciate it. All right. Well, having finished with that, I think we'll move on with our activities here tonight. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And good luck. Good luck in your, all your efforts. Good. Come back and visit us again. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, facilitators in... Kwai Hien in Bangkok, do you have a couple of teachers who'd like to step up to the microphone and tell us what kind of students you're working with and what kind of themes, what are some of your interests that you're thinking about here tonight? Bangkok, would you like to go first? A little bit of sound problem here. Looks like they're working on it. Time out. Okay. <laughs> How about Hua Hin? Does Hua Hin or um, are both sites without sound at this point? Uh, Hua Hin can hear you very well, Kulasli. Oh, we good. Are... Well, let's start with <laughs> let's start with Hua Hin then. It looks like you have some teachers ready too. What have they got to share with us tonight? Yes. Um, uh, first of all, um, the teachers were happy with uh, Professor Tomlin's remark, especially the dreams come true. And we would like to send that message from Hua Hin to Professor Tomlin. Thank you. Um, for the activity, we have a joint collaboration between the students and the teachers because uh, Leslie was focusing on the learners building their own learning process. So the teacher agrees that the students should present. So I'll pass it on to the students. Grade 12 from Wang Gai Gangwon School. Oh, great. We get to hear from students tonight. That's great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Tell us about your project. Yes. Our, our project is Young Guide Project. Yes. Why be, we do this project? Because we can practice English. That's the first thing. And we can bring tourists come to our town and pr present our culture. Yes. And Great. Age is, our age is about 18 years old. Or Grade 12. Really, English level is language English. Uh, language level is English, and the place that we 
can bring tourists to tour around is Hua Hin, around Hua Hin. Yes. Uh -huh. And the day that we can do Saturday all day because Monday to Friday we have to run and we have free time on Saturday. We can bring tourists, rocking, handicraft, culture. Yes, present. And then we want to present our my culture and present a temple to a tourist. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is just wonderful. What a great example. So this is a fantastic example of students working outside of class in your free time, working in the yeah. community and helping tourists get familiar with your lovely city and the beautiful country of Thailand. That's amazing. And may I congratulate you on your English. It is very excellent. Yes. Yeah. Let's you. give them a hand. Very nicely done. Thank you so much. Yes. Very nicely done. All right. Um, can I ask your teacher or ask um, Kun Sarada, can you take a picture with the girls at some point and send it to me so I can put it up in our photo album on our website? They'll be a good definitely. example for us. Yeah, definitely. We're doing that. So please keep smiling, Leslie. I'm about to take yes. a picture now. Thank you. Okay, great. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Hua Hin. How about Bangkok? How's your sound now? Is your sound back? Bangkok, Ajarnarapurn, are you there? Do you have some teachers who would like to share with us? Hmm. Good, Leslie. I, I think Bangkok yes. still has the problem with the sound. That's just fine. You know what we'll do? We'll move on and we'll come back to them for the second activity. No problem. So hang in there and we'll get it all figured out, I'm sure. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next part of our series here tonight, which is to talk a little bit about some types of projects, some types of projects that you can do. Um, and actually, let me stop for just a minute. Um, uh, Kun Sorada, do you, they can they, do you think they can hear me? Uh, yes. Leslie, or is it Narapon speaking. Okay. You, do you so maybe me? they can hear me, but they, they can't speak. Is uh, that right? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Okay, all right, so let's start thinking a little bit about some types of projects that you might choose to undertake. Projects can be structured in a number of ways, sort of along a continuum. You can give a lot of structure to the projects. In other words, the teacher, especially for the first project, may choose to do most of the goal setting. Or you can do an unstructured project in which the students set nearly all of the goals. Or you can do something kind of in between, which we will call semi-structured, in which the students and the teachers work together and define and organize the project and the goals. So one of the things to be thinking about tonight is the degree of structure that you think you're going to feel most comfortable with. If it's your first project, if it's your second project, um, whichever point of experience you may be bringing to this task. And we'll be looking at some examples of those as well. So structured, unstructured, or semi-structured. What I'm going to ask you to do tonight, I'm going to show you this slide now, and I'm going to come back to it again. We're going to look at some examples. What I'm going to ask you to do tonight as your second activity is to think about a type of project and a format that you might like to give it. And I would like to offer you three choices. Um, these, if you have other ideas in mind or you want to combine the choices, that's fine. But for those of you who are new to project-based learning, I thought perhaps some um, uh, really concrete ideas might be helpful. One format, one type of choice that you may choose to do with your students is in a report format. And when I say report, probably what it's going to look like is uh, something primarily written, uh, probably contained in a notebook or a folder. And this is, this is not to say that, right, that speaking and other skills aren't involved, but the end product um, could be in the form of some kind of report. 
A second option would be to have the students create some kind of display. And when I say display, I mean something visual, something with images, with pictures. This may be something like a bulletin board. It could be a poster or a set of posters. It could involve photos. It could be things that students draw. It could be pictures they cut out of the magazine or get from other locations, but essentially it's something visual. Again, it may have a written component that goes with it and perhaps even an oral component. With all of these, you can ask your students to be involved in speaking and, and talking about what they're doing or give them tasks along the way that involve other skills as well. So we've got reports, we've got displays, and the third option is some kind of dramatization. When I say dramatization, I use that term rather loosely. It could be in the form of a skit. And a skit, by skit, we mean something fairly short, a really short play or enactment of some kind. It could be a longer play. It could be something that involves music or dance. I saw a very nice example in Chayapum of students who were uh, creating an MTV kind of experience. And so they took a popular song and they reinterpreted it with dance and with movements and some dramatization. So dramatization can take a lot of forms as well, but essentially its primary product is some kind of performance, some kind of acting, um, typically in front of other students, uh, perhaps in front of parents, other classes. Um, you can choose who your audience will be. Here, I'd like to show you a series of photographs um, from Thailand, from uh, Chayapun School, where we looked at uh, a self-access center in which the students for several years now have been doing a wide variety of projects, and very successfully, I might add. In this case, the teacher begins with a structured task and then moves on to semi-structured and unstructured tasks. And one of the kinds of projects she has her students generate are these reports. And what you're looking at on the screen right now are notebooks. And these are notebooks on a wide variety of topics, everything from health issues to current events, um, but essentially topics that the students chose that interested them. And they created these project notebooks um, as the outcome of, of a long process, a term-long process. These are culminating projects. These are the advanced students. They do them in their final years in the English program. In fact, the, the teacher uh, told me that they often come back when they're applying for scholarships or school applications or jobs and ask to use these projects as examples of what they're capable of doing in English, and they make a difference. So these can have multiple applications not only inside your academic setting, but outside as well. All right, so we have examples of reports. Um, here are whole cases of these reports. I was just really impressed with uh, the amount of work that the students had done. And that what the teacher explained to me is that over time, she keeps copies of these reports, and they serve as models, as examples, for other students that come along. So as your students are creating these projects, what you might think about doing is building them as resource banks, as collections for your own classroom, because they serve as very powerful examples uh, for the next classes of students who come along. So we've got reports. Uh, we've got some displays. Um, this is a picture from Thailand, from Chayapum as well, of a bulletin board that the students put together not long after the tragic tsunami that occurred um, in Thailand and in that um, whole Indian Ocean area. Um, the students generated uh, reports, they gathered together information, they created maps, they just made a very large compilation of, of graphic uh, displays of information. Some of it is hand done, some of it is work that they obtained from other places. So this is a very nice example of a, a theme of something uh, that was very important to students that occurred in their community. And the bulletin board served not only as a means of practicing their English or developing their English, but also processing through a very difficult topic um, and something that was very close to the students and to their families. Just beautifully done.
Another example of a display, also from Chayapum, is what I would call a photographic essay. And this is a field trip that the students took out in the community which they, uh, in which they visited some uh, historical buildings for which Thailand, of course, is very famous, and historical buildings and temples. So we have photographs of the students, we have photographs of the site, um, and they did a lot of work and research and writing along with it. But the primary product in this was a display that they could then talk about and show to visitors, to parents, to other students, and, ex and to each other as well. So we have two examples of reports. We have a couple of examples of displays. Um, I have some videotape, which I, I don't have here with me tonight, but I do have one very nice uh, photograph of a dramatization. And this involves a, a song and a reenactment and some work with a song um, in which some high school girls work together. I think it, it was a popular song about boys and love and all of those kinds of things that um, high school girls like to think about and talk about. So these were really nice examples. They're just a few examples of what some projects might look like and might feel like along the way. What I would like you to do at this point as your second activity is to do some brainstorming together in groups again. Get back into your groups and do some brainstorming and go back to your notes that you wrote originally. Who are your students? What is their language level? How much time do you have? Is it going to be time inside of school, outside of school? And what kind of projects do you think your students might be interested in working with and might be realistic for you to produce as part of your project for this term? So I want you to choose one. Uh, think about, is a report going to work for you? Is a display going to work for you? Is a dramatization going to work? What type of project? Um, it, do you have in, an idea of some possible topics or themes? And you don't have to decide tonight. You can decide later. You can, I'd like you to, to decide before you come back next time. How much time you have available for this? Are you doing it inside of class or outside? And what resources are you going to need, do you think, in order to accomplish this? If we can leave this slide for a minute, I'll come back and check in with the facilitators, Ajar Narapurn and Kun Sorada. Let's, yes. let's leave the slide for a minute. Yes, please. Yeah. And Lynette, uh -huh. leave the slide. Thank you. Cut the slide. <laughs> and uh, let's check in with um, the facilitators. Are you clear on the task and would you like to do a quick translation? Uh, yeah, thank you, Leslie. Activity is song, right. แอคทิวิตี้ที่2ก็จากแอคทิวิตี้แรกอะค่ะที่อาจารย์ได้ทําไว้แล้วนะคะอาจารย์ก็มาคิดต่อว่าโปรเจกต์ไทป์ที่อาจารย์เลสลี่แนะนํา3แบบนี้นะคะเป็นรีพอร์ตเป็นดิสเพลย์เป็นดราม a t i z a t i o n เนี่ยอาจารย์คิดว่าที่อาจารย์คิดไว้เนี่ยนะคะอันไหนลักษณะไหนใช่ไหนที่จะเหมาะกับนักเรียนของอาจารย์แล้วก็ควรจะใช้ซีมไหนนะคะที่อาจารย์ได้ได้ลิสต์ซีมไว้แล้วเมื่อกี้นี้แล้วก็เวลาทั้งในห้องนอกห้องนะคะจะใช้ประมาณเท่าไหร่แล้วก็รีซอสก็คือแหล่งข้อมูลที่จะให้เด็กไปหาจากที่ไหนบ้างนะคะค่ะอาจารย์ใช้เวลาตรงนี้อีกประมาณคือเลือกมาแค่โปรเจกต์เดียวนะคะค่ะจากเมื่อกี้นี้อีกประมาณ3นาทีได้ไหมคะอาจารย์แล้วก็ทางของกรุงเทพนี่เดี๋ยวขอถ้าเผื่อว่ามีอาจารย์ที่รายงานก็รายงานรวบยอดจากของเมื่อกี้ด้วยนะคะสั้นๆค่ะขอบคุณค่ะโอเค it looks like maybe we're ready to come back together are you ready to come back as a whole group can we start with Bangkok can we hear from one or two teachers and can you give us some ideas about yeah. what you're thinking about doing for your project this yeah. For this uh, session, yeah. as for Bangkok side, and ask them to to round up the results of the first and the second activity. Yeah, very short. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh huh. And we'll start with. Um, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Robert. Yeah, we have uh, All right. a guest. Today. All right. So, can you hear me? All yes, right. I can. All right. So, uh, we actually have something in mind for Mateom 3. It's actually somewhere like the ninth grade. 
for our students here. So we are going to have 30 students and it is we're going to divide it into six groups with the age of 15 years old. All right? Okay. And their level of speaking in English is actually beginner. They're beginning to learn more about the language and uh, we're going to have a session for this project within three hours a week in one month. All right? And okay. um, All right, so we are going to have a somewhat like a one-act play with the involvement of music and dance with a type of semi-structured uh, project wherein the teachers and the students do some cooperation in how to do it. And also we are okay. going to present this outside the school so that while the students are performing, our Matayam Tree students are learning on how to do things and how to perform the different countries in Southeast Asia, other grade levels which are not so, um, or not helping us can learn and watch our show. So I think that's what my group have at Thank the you. moment. Thank you. Wow, very impressive. You're already so organized. That's just wonderful. But, well, I think some of the strengths of your work here tonight are that you're, you've already got a very clear idea of what you're going to accomplish and the amount of time that you need to do it. And I really like the fact that you're tying together not only students within the school, but activities in the community as well. So um, congratulations. You're off to a great start. That's just a wonderful example. Nicely done. All right. Um, we have Do we have one more from Bangkok? Yeah, yeah. Ajan Sunan Ka. Okay, great. Hello, Leslie. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Yes, I can. It's very great honor for us to be here. Um, I'm oh, from uh, Lapakaupi Yakom School. It is um, secondary school, and our students seem to be lower immediate. Uh, lower intermediate level, I would say, and the group that I belong to, they are about 13 and 14 years old, and my class mostly at about 50 students, yes, and um, we have English for 60 minutes for one period and two, mm -hmm. two hours a week. The topic that we think is served to our group is healthy food because we, we think uh, we should start from the thing that we are exposed to and important for our health. And the student can adapt it into their real lives. Yes. Um, we spend time to observe our students about their eating behavior and we found that now the situation in Bangkok there is a lot of fast food and junk food and students seem to be happy with this class of food so the topic that we have chosen seem to be helpful for them in the future yes okay Good. Well, that sounds very interesting. It sounds like they'll be using a lot of different language skills and it will have a strong tie into topics and perhaps even benefit their health as well. Of One of the things that we'll be looking at um, as possible ways for gathering data are uh, on projects doing things like conducting surveys or running polls. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that in this case, um, one thing you might ask your students if they're interested in doing is uh, developing small surveys or interviews that they can go around and ask other students or ask other people in the community and perhaps bring back information about other people's eating habits as well. We look forward to hearing more about that and getting a, a, a report or some kind of additional information from you. All right. How about Hua Hien? Are you ready to share with us as well? Sorry, I'm running towards the microphone. Oh, yes, we have uh, Ajahn Patake with us. Good evening, Leslie. I'm Patake from Samrayot Vityakom School in Bridgewood, Kirikan. Because my school is located in Samrayot, so 
we live near National Park, so I think mm -hmm. that the topic that is very suitable for students, it might be environment and mm. projects can be display. I mean a bulletin board of photos mm. or a poster because if I like students to work in groups so maybe we can motivate them to work in groups and we will get a lot of cooperative from the students and I think that the students will mm, interest about his community and they can get many resources from their place. Thank you. Oh, that's a great idea. So you've, you've taken something that's um, relevant for your local region and for your area and having students do something beneficial for the environment. I hope you'll send us pictures of the displays and the posters that they make. Will um, other people be able to view the displays, do you think? Other students or perhaps people from the community? Sure. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. they could almost be educational um, themselves as well. Yes. Right. And Great. The Rio National Park is a wet land, and there are uh -huh. bird watchings also. Oh. So many tourists I interest. Yeah, that's a great idea. I live in a wetlands also. I live in a very rainy place. And um, we have a lot of birds as well, though I suspect they may be different birds than what you have there. <laughs> Good. Well, I look forward uh, to learning something from your students. That will be wonderful. Good. All right. Do we have another example from Hua Hien, or are we going to stop with that one? Yes, we have another one, Leslie, at the back of the classroom. Uh, just All moment. right. Let's, let's hear one more. Um, uh, what a Sunan great group of teachers you've got together. I'm Sunan from uh, Taiyang Vitiya School. Uh, I try right, to. Right, welcome. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I try to. Uh, my, my students try to, to work uh, some project about uh, the famous uh, dishes from uh, Taiyang uh, District. Uh, as, uh, Tong Yip Tong Yot. This, this is, is a famous dishes. And. Uh, my student, uh, M6 student, uh, about uh, 18 years old, uh, they, they like to, uh, to do this project because uh, it's, uh, it's a role call. It's, uh, they know uh, uh, the step, how to make uh, the dishes, and they, they like to learn uh, the English, uh, the, wo the vocabulary from uh, the dishes. Uh, and uh, some 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 group I, I I give them I assign them to work in in group uh, some group uh, 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 happy because they they can speak uh, in English uh, can talk can 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 talk about how to make and and some group show by uh, display and role play uh, they. They, they like to, I think they're happy to, to, to speak English. Uh, it's not, mm, not fluency, not uh, accurate, uh, uh, not correct, but they're happy to, to speak, I, I think. That's okay, will you raise some... That's good, that's a great idea. And you raised some very important points. Um, in these projects, we... We are not going to be looking for perfection in English. We are looking for students to be motivated, to be interested in what they're doing. And um, you may choose for your goal to be fluency. You want them to develop their fluency and feel confident and good about what they're doing with English. So um, one of the things I'm going to ask you to think about for next time is what are the goals of the project? Um, what are the goals going to be? So. I have some, some questions. Uh, during the, sure. the max the project, uh, my students like to uh, speak Thai when they uh, discuss, when they uh, yeah. uh, have uh, some information. I think uh, it's okay if they use uh, uh, the native language in, in Thai. Because you know, when um, they this presentation, is they, they use English, but uh, yeah. 
I think I think this is a de well. I you know I I think it is. I think it's a decision that um, different teachers have to make for themselves. Some some teachers feel more strongly about English only in the classroom, and some teachers feel that why not use the native language part of the time? And there is research that supports both. Um, what I'm hearing from teachers here tonight is that you all have really excellent English yourselves. I assume that you're in using English a lot in the classroom, so the students have that as a role model. If their language skills are really low and you're asking them to discuss very complicated topics mm -hmm. and you need them to move through that information quickly, then perhaps using the native speech for those kinds of tasks is appropriate. Um, and you are the best judge of that. If you have situations where you're asking students to work in groups and you really want them to use English and they're not using English, then you may consider using some kind of uh, positive reward system or point system, something to encourage them to stay on task with English when you want them to make that transition. So as long as you feel like they're using English when you want them to and they're getting the rest of their work done, I think they're meeting your goals and their goals as well. Okay, thank you. Good job. <laughs> All right. Good question. Tough question. Wow. All right, and we're actually um, toward the end of our session where um, I'd be happy to answer other questions as well. Before we do that, let me give you your homework. You're going to have homework since this is a follow along session. Oh, yeah, homework. Um, what I'd like you to do for the next session, and we'll put it up here on the slide so that you can see it. For your next session, I would like you to bring the information that we started tonight. Who are your students? What are your goals? How many hours? What type of project? So that we can use that in our next session to move on toward goal setting and aligning those goals with different types of assessment that you may want to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this information is up on the website in the form of a handout. If you don't have that handout yet, um, we'll see if we can get that to you today or in the very near future. You can also go to the website and get a copy of the handout from tonight and tonight's PowerPoint slides as well if you would like copies of those. And again, I'm really hoping that um, with these projects, I think it'll be useful to future teachers who come to the website and who want to learn more about what you're doing if they can see some examples of that. So I'm hoping we can get some projects, um, photos of all these wonderful ideas that you're coming up with here tonight. And we can find a way for you to send them um, through the website. All right, are we ready to take a few questions then? Does anyone have questions before we, before we sign off? If you're too shy to ask the question on the camera, or if you think of a question later, you can email me. Um, your, this project is very important to me, and my email is on the website, and I try very hard to answer each one of them individually. How about questions from Hua Hin? Anything there, Kun Sorada? Well, so far, I don't see anybody has a question. Seems that they're very clear about the homework and they're so eager to do it. Thank you, Leslie. Oh, good. And um, I didn't have a chance to check in with you at the beginning. I also posted on the website um, a really helpful booklet. It's, it's rather long. It's about 59 pages long. Um, but it gives a really nice overview of project-based learning. And if you want the teachers to have a, a small book to refer to over the next five sessions, I think it might be helpful. So it's from the Northwest Regional Education Lab. So sometimes they ask me, you know, if I, if I only can have one reading and I'm going to use the paper to do it, which one should I do? And that's the one. Um, so if I may make that recommendation, um, it's an optional reading, but if they're wanting a reading to support what we talked about tonight, that would be a good one to make available. Leslie, uh, do you remember the, the title? What's the name of the book? Uh, it's, um, it's, it's on the website. It's the number one reading, and it's from the Northwest Regional Education Lab. Actually, let me pull it up here on my screen, and I can uh, get that for you. Na, 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 na. 
Here we go. Oh, here's our here's our class showcase. Let's let I don't know how if you can see it, but um, I'm really excited about this class showcase. I'm going to show you the reading too. Um, so the pictures that I used for you tonight, these were from schools where I visited, and um, I took those pictures. So this is just one school. So I'm hoping to get more schools. Send me some photos so that we can um, make a kind of album of projects to show as examples for other people. So since I have my website up. You asked about readings. Um, so when you're on the website, if you go to video conferences, and let me see if I can enlarge this so we can see it a little bit on, better on the television screen. Let's try one more. We have a, a list of the sessions in the column here. This is just our first session, of course, so it's the only one that's available. Um, if you go to session one, and if you scroll down to the online resources section, you'll see a link to implementing project-based instruction from the Northwest Regional Education Lab. And I'm going to open this website so that you can see what it looks like. It's a, it's a free publication. It's in the public domain. You can freely download it and copy it and redistribute it. I've also put a copy of it directly on our website server, so if you're having trouble for some reason accessing it from this site, we have a backup copy linked to this page as well. So it's got some very nice articles. The, there's an introduction. Um, there's an overview of some of the things we talked about tonight. What is project-based instruction? What are some of the benefits of project-based instruction? Uh, some ideas for implementing it some ideas for assessing it, and how it fits overall into a framework of professional development for teachers. So again, I, I recognize that it's, it is a little bit long. It's 59 pages. On the other hand, um, if you think about the fact that we can use it over all five of the upcoming sessions, I think it's probably worth uh, making available to people who feel like they would like this resource. Okay. All right. Well, good job, um, Hua Hin. Tonight, you're off to a wonderful start. I congratulate you on all coming together, and I look forward to working with you. Let's move over to Bangkok and check in with them and see if they have any questions for us as well. Ajar Narapurn, do the teachers there have ne any questions or need clarification on anything? Uh, yeah. Leslie, just one question from yes. yeah, Ajahn Subrani, please. Please. Okay, Leslie, Leslie, please. Uh, I have one question. If uh, uh, is it, it is a long-term project, how can con how how can I control my students? And uh, is it only a, a a project for the long-term project? Only one project? You understand? <laughs> um, that's a really good question. Um, actually, I'm going to I'm going to leave that in your control. So you can do a sh one short-term project. You can do one long-term project, or you can do a series of projects. And what I'm going to bring and make available to you for the next session is some ideas for how to, as you say, control it, how to guide it. And some of the things that we'll be looking at are the use of things like checklists, uh, performance-based assessment, self-assessment, peer assessment and sort of setting benchmarks along the way or mileposts. So here's where we want to be next week. Here's where we want to be two weeks from now. Here's where we want to be. And having the students track themselves, having the students be accountable for themselves. And I think this will be especially useful for those of you who are working in large classrooms with 30 and 40 and 50 and more students. Um, if we can get creative and come up with some systems where you understand what the students are doing and you know as they go along, but you have them be responsible for some of their self-tracking and tracking of each other as well. So next week, if you can please bring with you um, your goals and an idea of the, the topic that you might want to work with and the type of product you would like to have your students generate, then I will make available to you some of these ideas for uh, deciding on the number of goals and generating checklists to go with them and tracking the students and assessing them along the way and at the end when they're finished with their product as well. Does that sound like a good idea? 
Okay, great, yeah. great. We're going to be going through this together, and I feel really good that you're asking questions tonight. This is just a wonderful sign, and I hope you'll continue to do that. And if we find we need to make adjustments or bring in other materials or there are things that you would like to know more about, I hope you'll let me know because we can certainly do that. We can be flexible as we create the program and go through it. And if you think about it, what we're really doing here is we're modeling together as a group exactly some of the things that you'll be doing with your own students in your classroom as well. So our project-based learning series is a project. So it's a project about projects. And so we'll be going through a lot of these steps ourselves as we go. And when you come away from the five sessions at the end, you should have a collection of resources that you can use in your classroom on a trial basis. Maybe if it's your first project, there are some things that go well and some things that you would like to do differently next time, and that's fine. Um, you can do the second time you do your project, it's okay to make changes and to try different things. So give yourself permission to try and to experiment, and let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from Bangkok tonight? Um, uh, yes, uh, one more question. Yeah, from a gen Certainly. Yeah. Good evening, Leslie. Good evening. Yeah. This is more of a clarification than a question. Because um, I do understand sure. that project based learning emphasizes on being cooperative or cooperation rather than competition. But isn't it true that competition brings out the best in each and every student? Because what I'm, I'm thinking about is grouping my class into groups so they would be working mm -hmm. as a group but would be competing to other groups as well would that be advisable well i think this this idea of the degree of cooperation and the degree of competition that's a part of the the culture of your classroom is very much an individual consideration my only concern with setting up too much of a competitive environment is that you always have winners but then maybe you always have losers as well or people who don't feel as successful so um, again I leave that up to you I'm here as a resource to you I'm here to offer you ideas and uh, things that I have seen work well both in the United States and outside the United States as well but ultimately it's up to you to make the decision about what you know works best for your classroom but in the case of a project another way you might think about competition is rather than having the groups um, compete with themselves is to have individuals compete with their own individual selves. So perhaps another way to think about competition is to encourage your students to set goals for themselves, personal goals. And perhaps they share those with other students or perhaps they keep some kind of a journal or some kind of a record and they only share it with themselves or with you or with people within their group. But maybe they compete only against themselves. So here's a goal I set for myself. Can I reach it? Here's another goal. I'm going to try to challenge myself further and stretch myself further. Can I make it? Can I do it? Can I exceed it? So in that way, every student in our classroom has a chance to feel successful. What I, when I do projects in my class, I feel I've been successful as a teacher if at the end of the class, everybody has a smile on their face, everybody has a chance to shine, everybody had a chance to participate and everybody made progress and you know different students in the class are going to start at different levels even if we say my class is low intermediates we know that in a class of 30 students that low intermediate is here and I have students down here and I have students up here um, and I have some students who progress very quickly and some who progress more slowly and a lot of that's developmental a lot of its um, learning style. There are many, many factors that can come into that. And so I think the more chances we give our students to succeed and to progress um, in ways that best fit their learning needs, then we have more chances for everybody to win and feel like they got the blue ribbon at the end of the project as well. But that's just my personal opinion, mm -hmm. since you asked. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we are coming to the end of the first session. 
and Leslie, you have started the five, the first of the five sessions on project-based learning very nicely, very oh. yeah, fruitful, informative, and with rich discussion, which I think you know is very and beneficial to our teachers. So please. I would like to invite all teachers from Ho Chi Minh and Bangkok to give our dear Leslie a big hand today. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> May I congratulate you on putting together what look to be two excellent cohorts of teachers. I am really impressed with the ideas that they came up with, with the level of English that I'm hearing tonight and with the uh, progress that they made already in the first session and um, during the activities we were just comparing notes on our side and reflecting back on how much we've learned from doing these sessions and last year how reluctant people were to get into groups and sort of move along. Once they did, they got the hang of it. But boy, tonight, uh, thank you facilitators and experienced people. Everybody just moved right into the tasks and we covered a lot of ground. I look forward to seeing the directions that you take with these projects. So may I offer my sincere thanks. I am so privileged to be part of this partnership with all of you in Thailand and with the State Department. Um, we're just really excited about continuing the second 10 sessions and looking forward to two more sessions that are just coming right up in December. So thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Okay. Okay, bye, Leslie. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything. Okay, bye bye. Thank <laughs> you. Bye bye. And thanks for the, yeah, the mouse hat. <laughs>